Ah, there you are. Um, this video you're about to see, this is not it, this is an introduction. The whole thing's gone pear-shaped. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. But I thought I'd show you how I made this resonator guitar. And, uh, oh, it turned out to be a nightmare. Not the making of it so much. I mean, I enjoyed that, but making the bloody video. <laughs> so I've, uh, I've already made the video, but I'm not sure. I don't know where I'm coming or going, to be honest. I think I'm going to do Lally. I just thought I'd show you the finished product and then you can watch how I made it or parts of how I made it because it was about an hour long, the video, and I've cut it right down to about, I don't know, 20 minutes, even less. 14 minutes, I think. Some of it's quiet. Start of it, I'm talking. Some of it's quiet in the middle. Then I finish it off with a bit of an explanation at the end. But anyway, so I thought I'd just show you the finished, finished guitar again. I mean, I say again, because I made another video, but I'm not sure if that's included in what I've just done. So here, here you go, my steampunk resonator guitar. And it's in um, tune to D flat, and it's perfectly in tune. D, A, D, F sharp, a D um, I'm trying to learn to play Amazing Grace on it because that's what inspired me to do it in the first place. But... Anyway, so it, so it works. It's a working guitar. I just can't play it very well. Um, did I tell you about my thumb? I hurt it about six weeks ago now. It's still not. Look at the difference in size. It's still not right, and it's recently started hurting again, and the bruise has appeared. So God knows what's happened there. But <laughs> anyway. I'll try, I'll try and add this onto the bit of video that I've already made and maybe you'll be able to see it one day. Hello my friends, how are you doing? Um, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I'm in the workshop. Look, and I'm very pleased I've tidied up the, the benches uh, to the best of my ability. Is that the right phrase? No, uh, I've tidied them up as much as I wanted to. <laughs> Today, today's project is, um, oh, hang on. Hello, I'll just um, tell you today's project is making a resonator guitar. What I have here is a guitar that I made a long time ago. I made this guitar out of two separate guitars. Um, I made it specifically to play the blues. Um, but it was what I call a... Well, it shredded my fingers. I could never get it... Never get the neck and... Right, because I don't take things seriously. That's the trouble. But anyway, I made I made this and, you know... I had it for a little while and then I chucked it in the shed where it um, unfortunately got a little bit damp and uh, 
the result of leaving it in the shed is what you now see before you. Yeah, I did all that. It's not, not genuine. I, I made it look like that, you know. Um, so I've got to make a resonator guitar. So what I need, I need this old guitar. Um, you can use any guitar you want. I wouldn't use an expensive one though, because it might not work. Because I, really <laughs> I, um, I don't really know what I'm doing. But here's here's the main things I need. One, a lid from a tin of paint. I've scraped most of the paint off of it. A pencil and a piece of wire this wire is what I bought for soldering it's supposed to be fantastic in fact it's like um, according to the advert it's just like a weld so strong the trouble is I couldn't make the fucking thing melt with that that I bought specifically and it just oh well the flames it's less powerful than a match Anyway, getting off the subject, and so we've got a tin lid, a bit of wire, and our collar from my old gas boiler flue. Because the purpose, what I've got to do is, I'm going to use this as a former, because this has to have a cone shape put into it. So I have to, I'll try and show you, I'll try and put this here, I have to get this, this part of the tin lid concave, it's got to go in to make it like a cone shape, that would come out, come out the back of it like that, so what I thought, I found this, I thought, it, I could, I could um, put the tin, the tin lid in like that, can you see what I'm doing, yeah put the tin lid in like that, oh yeah, and then Tighten that around it so it's like that, and that's where the wire comes in. You get your wire, put it through these convenient holes, and uh, pull it tight. Whether this will work with this solder stuff, I don't know. But. So, so you do that. I might, I might make it a bit, a bit better. But the idea is that I'm going to now concave this. I thought perhaps I could do it with a ball peen hammer, and I thought go. Go like this. See if it stretches it down. It actually already has started. You can see that, I think. So, so that's what I'm doing. I'm making. This is the beginnings of me making a resonator guitar. I need to tighten that up a bit, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Ah, now then, while you're um, watching this video, I've turned all the sound bits off. Well, at least I think I have of quite a lot of the video so I've got to talk to you for I think it's about eight minutes about 
well, I don't know what I'm going to talk to you about, actually. Um, I can't I can't think of one story I could tell you. I really can't. Um, so I'll just tell you what I'm doing. I'm making a resonator guitar, as I've said. And uh, this bit is a paint lid from a tin of paint. And this is going to be the actual, well, I think it might be called, I think this might be called the resonator. I've got to rub this tin lid until it goes into a cone shape. Um, and that's what I'm doing here, or maybe I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> Um, I wonder if I can actually stop this recording and then start again so I can actually think of something to say. Oh, pause recording. That's handy. I've just thought of a story I could tell you from childhood again, and it's to do with music. Because my uh, relationship with music is rather strange. I just don't understand music very well at all. I've never been very good at it, but I've always loved to sing. And uh, when I was a boy in the children's home, this Shirley Oaks children's home, it was called in near Croydon, Shirley near Croydon, they had a, a band, school band, and I applied to join it. And um, I wanted to play the trumpet desperately because I wanted to be like, you. you might not know this name, or well, some of you were Eddie Calvert. He was the trumpeter in those of the fifties, the, trump, the trumpet player, along with Satchmo, of course. But Eddie Calvert was the English version of Satchmo, Louis Armstrong. No, he wasn't an English version of the. You couldn't have another version of Louis Armstrong. He was unique. Eddie Calvert was just a damn good trumpet player, and I wanted to be like Eddie Calvert. So I joined, I, try, I applied to join the band and uh, Mr. Parr, lovely old bloke, the band leader, one of the nicer people of my childhood. Um, he said, no, he said, you can't, you won't be playing the trumpet. He said, <laughs> I asked him why. Oh, he said, your lips are too thick. <laughs> Strikes me as funny these days. Um, yeah. My lips are too thick. So he put me on to play in what, what um, you might think is called a euphonium. But it was like a little tube. It was like a, it was called the second baritone. That's what it was. It was like a, a small tuba. But it, yeah, like a euphonium, if you know what that is. I hope I'm think, thinking of the right bloody word now. So, yeah, so I couldn't play the trumpet, so I played the euphonium, and none of us could read music when we got there, us kids. So, dear old Mr. Parr, he'd written out every note, every key that we had to press on our instruments for the music. So, you know, the three keys on the, on the, on the euphonium, on the second. On the tuba I was playing, a small tuba, there's three keys and each note he'd written under the, which key to press. And we got all the timing and everything. I mean, we were young. We were, what, eight, nine years old. Um, but we actually used to go out and do shows, at, you know, village fates and things like that. My God, we must have sounded bloody terrible. <laughs> Nobody ever said we did, but um, I can't imagine we sounded very good. But we used to play all the old um, band songs, marching songs. We didn't march, we used to sit there, but we used to play marching songs and, and um, good old English tunes like Sussex by the Sea, good old Sussex by the Sea, etc., etc. Yeah, so that was my little story about being in the band. Mr. Mr. Parr was actually from, he'd been a grenadier 
guard and he'd been a band bandsman in that. I suspect he'd been through hell in the war. Then we used to think about what these guys, the men who, who I met in my life, never used to think at that time about what they'd been through in the war. And, you know, you used to see lots of people with limbs missing. Like there was a guy, a lodge keeper there called George, who was who had only one leg. Well, he had a wooden leg. He used to make jokes about it. But, yeah, been through hell, some of these people. And we just didn't realise. And, of course, still goes on today, doesn't it, war? Anyway, I don't get into that, what's happening at the Senate after that would just drive me really angry. So uh, I've done about six minutes chatting away here, so I'll stop there and see if I can add it to the video, the quiet bits of the video. Not bad, and it doesn't sound at all bad, really. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe.